Temperatures right now are in the low 70s, but take a good look because these temperatures are gone for quite some time. I'll have your forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Also first at four, no more beds. A local children's hospital says it's been overwhelmed by cases of RSV and flu. It has a key piece of advice for parents. Nick. I don't want it to be the bearer of bad news, but it won't be too long until you see these things on the road, but they need drivers to put these things on the road. So what does it take and how much can you make? Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, Maud Children's Hospital now says it is 100% full because of RSV cases. The Ann Arbor Hospital says the surge is overlapping with flu season, overwhelming resources. There are pediatric bed shortages, longer wait times in the ER, and the hospital is postponing some elective surgeries. Mott has seen 259 cases of RSV this season, a nearly 50% increase over last year. The hospital says most children with RSV can be cared for at home, so parents should talk to their kid's pediatrician before rushing them to the emergency room. Their pediatricians can diagnose RSV as well, um, and they are trusted partners in our community. And so really, really so our emergency rooms aren't overrun. Um, we're really asking families to partner with their pediatricians. And of course, you know, if a child's um, breathing becomes labored, if, um, if, if there's an unusual cough, um, of course, please bring your children to the emergency room. Ahead of five and six, our Dr. Frank McGeorge will have more on how Mott is trying to expand their capacity to care for sick kids and what parents can do to reduce their child's risk. We've got breaking news from Detroit's west side. Right now, the police department is telling us officers were called to Chippewa and Ardmore for shots fired at a vehicle. They found a car had crashed into a garage. The man inside that car was dead. Right now, his identity is unknown, and there's no information on suspects. We're working the story, and we'll keep you posted. Well, Michigan, uh, Michiganians are celebrating their takeover of the state legislature with a barrier-breaking new leadership. They're trying to choose a new Speaker of the House right now, and State Representative Joe Tate is expected to become the first African-American to hold that position. Now, he serves the second House district, which spans from Detroit into three of the gross points. Rob Maloney is in Lansing right now, and he'll have a live update tonight at 5. State Senator Winnie Brinks from Grand Rapids will be the first woman to serve as the Senate Majority Leader. She says Democrats are, quote, ready to work with Governor Whitmer to make the Great Lakes state a place where people can thrive. And as a majority for the people, we will prioritize the needs of Michigan residents and the rights they deserve in everything we do. In today's first forecast, meteorologist Kim Adams doing a little double duty, tracking your forewarned weather and keeping an eye on another deadly storm hitting Florida. Kim. Yes, and the nice thing is we have exact track 40 radar that's not just for here in Michigan, but it's all over the country. So we have been able to track what is now Tropical Storm Nicole. It was Hurricane Nicole. More on that in a moment. Right now, take a really good hard look at the temperatures because I think these 70s are gone for quite some time. 72 at Metro Airport now, 71 in Pontiac, 72 in Ann Arbor. It's a good change from yesterday by about 10 degrees. So we're 10 degrees warmer this afternoon than we were 24 hours ago in Howell. Also uh, Metro Airport, eight degrees warmer tomorrow. That's the day of change for us as we bring in some showers. Highs still make it into the low 60s, but then for Saturday only in the 40s. Let's talk about exact track 40 radar. Here's what is uh, tropical storm Nicole right now. We're going to zoom in a bit for you here. It's just moving through Tallahassee. It is slightly over water, but not long enough to strengthen. It will continue to weaken, but Gainesville also getting some uh, pretty moderate rainfall right now and some high winds. Unfortunately, so is Port Charlotte. Cape Coral, they're getting rain right now as well. Let's go to Kimberly Gill in the newsroom to see what kind of damage we're seeing in Florida. Hi, Kim. Good afternoon. While Nicole wasn't as powerful as Hurricane Ian, the storm is massive covering, as you just showed there, Kim, nearly the entire state of Florida. It's the last thing residents needed in the final weeks of an already destructive hurricane season. At least two people are dead. We're told they were electrocuted by a downed power line in the Orlando area. So let's take a look at how the storm swamped Florida's east coast with a powerful surge. Scientists say it was likely more destructive because seas are rising. 
thanks to climate change. Some of the worst damage seems to be along the coast in Volusia County. Several homes have toppled into the Atlantic Ocean there. And we have more video from up and down the state's east coast. Nicole's impact pushed into South Florida in towns such as Hollywood Beach, Lauderdale by the Sea, and Deerfield Beach. The storm also swamped parts of St. Augustine, which is closer to Jacksonville at the northern end of the state. And you could see plenty of flooded streets uh, in those areas. Residents once again dealing with the trauma of losing their homes like this man from Volusia County. Listen. Honestly, just kind of shocked. So still haven't really processed it, but um, definitely, definitely crazy. Storm's impact is being felt clear across the Florida Peninsula. This is video of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge that spans Tampa Bay. It was closed this morning when winds hit 50 miles per hour. At last check, that landmark bridge remains closed to all vehicles. So uh, as Kim Adams mentioned, well, you know, actually, let me mention this too. The storm is still on the move and will march up the rest of the East Coast over the next few days. Um, we're tracking the damage left behind and we'll have updates on the storm's path when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. For now, let's send it back to you, Karen, in the right. studio. We appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Well, the new numbers on consumer prices are the best that we have seen in months, sparking a big rally on Wall Street. Prices were up 7.7% in October. Now, that's compared to the year before. That number dropped from 8.2% in September and was the smallest increase since January. So if you take out food and energy prices out of the equation, the so-called core inflation was up 6.3%. All the numbers were lower than economists had expected, helping to ease inflation. Prices fell for used cars, clothing, medical care, and food price increases slowed down as well. So as we mentioned, Wall Street was surging after the latest report seemed to show inflation might just be cooling. Take a look. The Dow now, markets have closed. Dow up more than 1,200 points. Investors are hoping this is a sign. The worst inflation is behind us, but most analysts say it's a little too soon to declare victory. Ready or not, we are headed into another Michigan winter. We know snow can be beautiful, also can be messy and dangerous on our roads. Oakland County's plowed truck drivers are already gearing up to keep all of us safe. And as Nick Monticelli reports, the county is also looking for more help to fill jobs that are rewarding in more ways than one. Yeah, please don't shoot the messenger here. Tis the season and I don't want to admit it either, but because it is the season, the Road Commission for Oakland County having the safety meeting to talk about or remind their workers what they need to do when operating these things and putting out the call that they could use some more people behind the wheel. This big one right here, this is used when we have heavy, heavy snow. With a smile on his face, James Austin enjoys walking the floor of this garage in Southfield. All right. He works at the Road Commission for Oakland County. Push this one. This was the belly blade. Soon, this county plow will be his second home. Say we, we get off at 3.30. Well, in three or four hours, we could get called in to start a 16-hour shift. So uh, it, it, it's grueling. Grueling, yes, but also rewarding. This is all about the public. This is all about the public, their safety. Today was the Road Commission's annual safety meeting, reminding drivers of the do's and don'ts on the road. And they are still looking for more of those drivers with a specific license. CDLA, a commercial driver's license with an A designation, which is an air brake designation. They're looking for full-time employees and part-timers. So we're looking for some people, $21 an hour, again, CDLA required. Uh, we guarantee a minimum of three days a week, and then they're on call 24-7 for the rest of the time, and, and we bring them in as needed in addition to that you know, during winter storms, winter uh, weather occurrences. <laughs> weather occurrences that we know are coming and drivers like James are happy to clear. It feels good when when the customers they wave and they literally hang out their windows They're like thank you so much. Thank you for doing the road. You know, so it, it makes you feel good in Southfield. Nick Monticelli local four. All right. Thank you, Nick. The Road Commission for Oakland County is responsible for nearly 3000 miles of roads this season. They expect to use approximately 64,000 tons of salt, which is roughly the weight of 64,000 giraffes. A little trivia for you.